two men fought. The knight was defeated by the man in black. As the knight fell to the bottom, to the unfortunate men like him. He managed to shout to his tormentor that he was mad. People shouted, despot, demon. But the man in black just looked at them with his red gaze and thought that they could come up with more interesting nicknames. The demon sat on a mountain of defeated men. The knights surrendered and the defeated men fell. The man in black armor looked directly at everyone with his black eyes. He grinned and said, couldn't you think of anything cooler? But suddenly he was shouted at. He was very surprised to hear Wan Yuan. He stood on a mountain of defeated and thought that it had been a very long time since anyone had called him that. Wan Yuan chuckled and began to think back to who might have called him that. It could only be a golden-haired knight on a white horse, in shining white armor. The paladin of the Jin Yao and Sacred Temple had asked him many times to stop. Wang Yuan was surprised by such a request from Yao An. The latter was very courteous. Wan Yuan became embarrassed and said, If you hadn't saved me last time, a terrible thing would have happened. The man grinned and said, Without your help, I wouldn't have destroyed all those knights. The paladin was very angry. He looked at Wan Yuan with hatred. Van grinned and offered the paladin to fight him. Taking out his red sword, his red eyes glittered. His sword blazed with fire. He promised he would never stop. Wan Yuan began to release fire from his sword. The flames almost completely surrounded his figure. His body had changed. He transformed into a powerful final boss of the entire Acetel continent. He no longer looked like a man. His eyes had lost their former look and were blazing with fire. He soared into the sky, and flashes of white power were sent out from his body in all directions. Even before the Great War began, there were dragons in the world, and there were huge blue giants. There was a beautiful continent called Uranus, with marvelous nature and buildings. The sacred temple was made of white stone. It was majestic and powerful. When Wan Yuan opened his eyes, he saw a light at the end of a long tunnel. He marveled at the world he could see for the first time. It was real. Wan Yuan raised his hand to the light and looked at it closely, looking at his long black fingers. He sat on the throne as the boss. He knew where he was and what he had to do. He rose from his throne, light pouring into the hall from the large windows. He knew this was the place of Uranus. Wan Yuan turned his back to the throne. His white hair was developing. Before us stood the majestic and terrible king of Uranus. He walked towards the direction from the palace. The powerful and mighty guards met him in a bow. Wang Yuan walked down the red carpet. On the way to the long staircase, Wang Yuan looked at his subjects. He was covered in black armor. He and his subjects were locked in the palace waiting for the players. That was their purpose. Wang Yuan looked at us. His hair was developing. A fire key was burning on his chest. Suddenly, a red pop-up appeared in front of him, with the words, Not a bad start. When the king saw this inscription, he was angry. He didn't know what it was. The inscription had changed. It now read, I am the mastermind behind this game, your mentor. The king scrunched up his face in surprise. He thought it was a good joke. He waved away the red window and thought that a king like him didn't need clues. But the red window kept up with the king. It was determined to prove to him that it had power. Behind the king, the red window was glowing brightly. It was about to burst. The king shouted at the window and didn't realize what was happening. Abruptly, everything was colored red. The head boss didn't realize what was happening. The red window was trying to open his eyes. Everything glowed, bright light pouring in from everywhere. The red window screamed that the training mode had started. The learning process could cause dire consequences. Red glares flew around the king. The king screamed and didn't realize what was happening. The red rays were passing through his body. Once in the electronic space, the king heard from all sides that he was in a VR game. That it was an unreal world. Numbers and information surrounded him. The red window was downloading information into his brain. He was learning more and more about the games. He was surrounded by electricity. He was all filled with information. Even the graphs appeared in his eyes. When it was over, we saw the king sitting on the ground. His brain was overloaded. Smoke was coming out of his head. The red window kept talking. The tired king decided to start asking questions. So there were two worlds and there was a huge difference between them. The king thought about how his whole world was just lines of code and he himself was just numbers. But the window changed his mind. The king was a very important part of this system. The window showed him how important. The king looked at it all and smiled. Numbers and videos flashed past him. The king was so excited about it and was looking forward to meeting the players. But the window warned him that there was some kind of problem. 
The window replied that this most important problem in the game was the king himself. The king heard the answer and got angry and clenched his hands into a fist. How dare the window laugh at him? The window told that because the king had not woken up for a long time, the players could not get into the game. The king could not find anything to answer. The king was questioning the developer, but since he woke up, and now players will be able to enter the game in peace. It turned out that there were still tasks that only the king could perform, as he possessed reason and free will. The king was flattered by this response. He was embarrassed and pleased that he was special. The window asked the king to perform small tasks, like moving a huge rock, which the king did. The king was also required to rebuild four statues. Taking a hammer, he set to work. Sitting with the royal lion, the king growled menacingly as the program demanded of him. By pressing various keys, the king had to check how all the non-player characters worked. The king collapsed from fatigue as he obeyed the window's commands without reservation. At the same time, it still required him to train often. The king recoiled sharply as he was told he had crushed the flower. But the window itself restored the crumpled flower and even created two flowers in its place. The king saw how using the code, the window changed everything around him. Then he began to ask him about the power of this program code. The king roared with rage as he realized that the window was just mocking him. After all, with the code, it was possible to do all these things he had been doing for so long. Suddenly, there were sparks in the sky, and the heavens opened up to reveal a huge hole in the sky. Streams of energy were coming out of the blue hole. It was astonishing in its power. It was a portal. The king looked at this portal and marveled. He froze in anticipation of the players, looking straight up at the sky. The king could hear the system booting up. It wouldn't be long before hundreds of players would enter his world. And through the portal, people came pouring in. There were women and men, knights, warriors, mages, sorcerers. The king was jumping around happily and greeting all the players on his continent of Uranus. The people saw the city in all its splendor, many beautiful buildings, majestic nature. There were those who were very happy and delighted with the area. And there were those who were immediately dissatisfied and even wanted to file a complaint. People have been waiting for years for this game checked out all the features and functions. Many people were pleased with the welcome gifts. Somebody's already started calling a team to fight together. People chose their roles, characters, and opportunities. They ran to meet new adventures. Someone in the square declared that they were very sorry that such a world was not possible in reality. People fled after hearing interesting news and scary statements. The men were discussing who would like a game where all the people are real and something can happen to them. The man intimidated his companion, by claiming that there had been some changes in the game. He said ominously that there were ghosts in the game. His companion was frightened and screamed. They talked about how artificial intelligence has become the very ghost. The king glared angrily and shook with rage. His eyes narrowed. He was breaking through defenses, screaming and furiously trying to reach the system. He didn't understand why he couldn't greet the players. The window said that the final boss can't show up to the players. Since he is strong and powerful, and his health level is higher than most players. The players would flee from him in fear, as their strength level was tens of times less. The king turned white with indignation. He froze and didn't understand how it all worked, clenched his hand into a fist and shed a stingy male tear. The king was very sorry that he was so powerful, but the developer gave him a chance, said there was a way out, because you can always become a different person. The king has a special mission, a very important one, to pretend to be another player. The king was excited about this opportunity. People in history and literature have a common stamp that the closest friend suddenly turns out to be the main villain. Imagine their surprise. The king was talking to the system and was willing to pretend a little, hearing an offer from the system to remove the heart. Suddenly there was silence. I could hear the birds flying away. The king froze in surprise. He stood silent for a long time. He pondered the thought. He spoke to the window. Would he really have to give his heart away? Only by removing the heart from their chest could one become a player, as it was an important part of the game system. Putting his hand to his chest, the king thought about whether he could really do it. The king watched the pop-ups. The program promised it wouldn't hurt, but maybe it wouldn't be as interesting to go through the game. The king scratched the back of his head and thought. His white hair ruffled. The king thought once more. After all, he is the strongest and most powerful character in this game. Wouldn't he be able to handle the game without such an unnecessary thing? All that was required to agree was to put your hand on the pop-up window. 
The silhouette of the king's hand was illuminated on the red surface. The king slowly extended his hand toward the screen, a key on his chest beginning to light up. An amulet burst from his chest. A red ruby glittered brightly there. The heart was gone, and emptiness remained in his chest. The king cried out in surprise. Next to the king, windows popped up that told how much strength, agility, health, and luck he had. The numbers were the biggest. A key symbol appeared on the red screen. Apparently, the king's heart had disappeared there. The king's appearance was changing. The crown and armor shattered. The inhuman face was replaced by a young man. A human body appeared. The king's shell was disappearing, revealing a young, dark-haired youth. Just like that, a handsome young man appeared. The only thing that distinguished him from a normal person was his red eyes and long black hair gathered in a ponytail. He stood next to a tree, Droplets of sweat were dripping down his face. The king was without armor or weapons. A blue tattoo was visible on his face, next to his eye. The king stood leaning against a tree. The system congratulated him on his new body and rank, but it immediately informed him that from now on, the game would change. It would no longer be the same. Everything around them began to change. A warning sounded that the game would change its course. Everything around the king turned red. The notices of the game swirled around the king. There were so many of them that they covered the whole area. Various windows popped up. Program codes were visible. But in the center, the king's heart was visible. Warnings, many warnings that the world would be destroyed, someone had invaded the game core, the security system had failed to stop the invasion. Resetting the core had failed. The king stood there not realizing what was happening. Suddenly, warning windows started popping up. Thousands of windows were warning the king that something had gone wrong. One phrase was written everywhere. The world is about to collapse. The king was surrounded by a thousand windows. He was screaming and didn't understand what had happened. He wondered who had invaded the game system, why there were error windows everywhere, and what destruction awaited them. There was not long to wait for answers. Very soon, the king saw the answers to his questions. Suddenly, the king saw something terrible that made him furious and terrified. Behind all these notices was a real nightmare. The world he had known and loved suddenly began to crumble. His world began to crumble. Huge red pillars of flame were destroying the land he knew. Fields, forests, rivers, palaces, everything was enveloped in red flames. It was impossible to look at. The king, in a desperate attempt to do something, raised his fist and screamed. He blamed everything on the system that had tricked him into doing this to his world. His fist slammed into the red window. He screamed and blamed the system for everything. But nothing changed. Only the notifications increased, telling the king that the destruction of Uranos was imminent. But it didn't help. The windows kept popping up. More and more information about the new features of the game appeared in them. Transferring players to another world was underway. The windows said that the destruction of Uranos had been confirmed. The system had been given the highest level of access. The king's hometown was crumbling before his eyes. Red flames of destruction enveloped the city. Pillars of flame and force erupted from all directions. Whatever they touched was destroyed. Users didn't realize what was happening. The game was dissolving before their eyes. They were screaming that the game was broken. Their bodies were disappearing. Everything around them was collapsing. The world was dissolving into pixels. And no one understood what had suddenly happened. When progress was at the 70% mark, the king saw the core of the game begin to collapse over his head. The system said that they had destroyed everything together. Shards were flying in different directions with a crackling sound. In a circle, the king was surrounded by red notices with warnings written on them. There was a deafening explosion, and progress reached the 100% mark. The symbol of the king's heart lit up on the system screen. Rocks flew everywhere. The explosion began. New windows appeared. The system told the king that everything had changed, and interesting challenges would await the players in the new world. The king looked at the new alerts. Numbers and game codes flashed by. There were to be new adventures in a new world. The king was angry and yelled at the system. It had deceived him and put his world in danger. 
Everything was colored in red-pink tones. Pillars of explosion erupted from beneath the ground. These pillars of power were also shining in the sky. They were destroying everything they touched. A huge blast wave engulfed Uranos. The king suddenly snapped out of it and rushed somewhere, hoping to change the course of events, or save someone. Red pillars of power appeared in the sky. A huge surge of power rumbled over the horizon, destroying everything it could reach. There was a powerful bright red explosion. The force engulfed the king. He dissolved into it. A window popped up one last time, informing them that the most important player was the king. The system promised that they would meet the king once more and test what he was capable of. The king's heart flew, pixels and pictures changed. The world changed completely. Gradually, one picture replaced another. A new sky began to appear. Earth. There were fewer and fewer pixels. In their place was a picture of the real world. The king's heart flew onward. Following the sky, new vegetation appeared. The leaves looked like real leaves, and so the king found himself in a new world. Gradually, the pixels disappeared and a normal picture appeared. He sat on the ground and looked around confused. His appearance had changed. The armor was gone. His face had become human. The king had no equipment or weapons with him. Wan Yuan was confused. He looked at the blue sky and tried to understand what had happened. He twisted his head around, looking for a road he should take. He found himself alone in the desert. There was emptiness everywhere. He walked on the sand, leaving footprints behind him. Ka Friend stopped as there was no more path. Wan Yuan stood on the edge of a cliff. Birds flew by beside him. The king stood looking at the new world in wonder. It was not like the old one. His mouth opened in surprise. His eyes opened wide. A drop of sweat ran down his face. There were many forests in the new world. A volcano was smoking. In the middle of the forest was the skeleton of an ancient animal. The king stood on the edge of a cliff and looked around at the new world, which he didn't recognize. Different birds flew in the blue sky. The king thought with a sigh of disappointment at how easy it was to fool him. He was the most important character in the game. And some virus had fooled him so easily. He felt ashamed of his act. His red eyes looked on with regret. While he was thinking, an alert suddenly popped up that he was on Uranos. The king was dumbfounded because he was 100% sure that this was definitely not his world. The king of Uranos knew all about it. In his mind's eye, the king was standing next to the Uranos plaque. He was angry. He had cut up the entire sign with that name on it, for this world was not Uranos. He was panting with anger, and his eyes were burning with fire. A message appeared in the blue alert saying that the exit button is missing from the game. Players would like it back. It was more relaxing that way. They demanded that the button be returned. But the system wrote that the door to the real world would be open. But there was one but. The girl read the notification. Her dark eyes stared at the notification on the screen. That there would always be a way out into the real world. But there was one thing. Players were horrified to find that their avatars looked like they were from real life. They were looking into the system screen like a mirror. One player thought it was illegal. How the system could know what he looked like in real life. And to get out of the game, you have to get to the main island alive. The king stood in front of the forest, where the red eyes of the monsters were staring at him. He was very angry, and he cursed the system for everything it had done to him and his world. The king was worried about the players and worried about them. He thought most of them were scared and didn't know what to do next. He wanted to go in search of them to help them. He clenched his teeth with anger and determined to go. Wan Yuan turned around and headed into the forest with all his determination to save the players. But the system shrouded him in blue and moved him to another location. But suddenly, everything under my feet lit up blue. The system started giving notifications. The character was taken to the first stop, Cloud Research. The system alerted that they would be in this place for three days. For a more comfortable stay in this world, the duration would be that long. It is necessary to choose a weapon. The king's name is now Traveler Wang Yuan.
he was teleported to a beach near the forest. The system showed Wang Yuan the stratum characteristics of the character. It was the most entry level everywhere. The character was very weak. The character suddenly heard the system notification and turned around in horror, watching what was happening. He looked at his level and progress. The king was distressed. He looked at the characteristics of his character. There were ones and even zeros everywhere. How could the former king have such weak characteristics? Wan Yuan looked at his spreadsheet and was dumbfounded and even angry. The system congratulated the king for being ranked for the first time. But unfortunately for the king, it was the ranking of the weakest players in the game. Wang Yuan was simply dumbfounded by such news. He didn't understand why this had happened. How could the king of the Uranos continent become such a weakling? How could the king of the continent become such a weakling? Wang Yuan made a facepalm. His entire body trembled with anger and resentment. He was screaming and angry at the injustice. He didn't have to start at the beginning, from the bottom. He stomped his feet and thought about the injustice. Since he appeared before the players in such a weak body, so why should he have to start the game from the beginning? Isn't there any other way? He was the strongest king of this continent. After thinking for a moment, Wang Yuan assumed that it was a failed prank. The system said that the player's level was closely related to his body from the real world. Since Wang Yuan had never existed in the real world, he was one of the weakest players. The system alerted that the level depended on the body in the real world. Wang Yuan slumped and hunched over, opening his mouth in frustration. The system promised to match the skills and tasks to the level. But in order to do so, certain conditions of the system must be met. Wang Yuan was studying the standings and thought about the fact that someone was ahead of him. Who was that person? Jin Yao An. Was even weaker than the king. Wang Yuan was worried about this player. The king was very unhappy about what had happened. The system promised that there would be many ways to level up. But first, you have to choose a starting weapon. Wan Yuan agreed and asked the system to show what weapons it had. The system unfolded the types of weapons in front of the king. Swords can be used if a player has more points in strength or defense. The staff can be used if the player has more points from the section with intelligence. An accurate bow and arrow can be used if you have a lot of points in the dexterity section. Also, for this purpose, and served as a dagger decorated with precious stones. Wan Yuan looked at the selection of weapons. The king noticed that it was very similar to how it was in his world, on Uranos. He thought back to how it was in his home world. Weapons determined the player's class. Four weapons were the four starting classes. The first two classes were of assassin and warrior. The assassin was hooded, his face was hidden, and he held a sharp dagger in his hands. The second class was the knight. It was a large man wearing armor and a sword in his hands. Each class has different development paths. After the weapons are mastered, it will be possible to change classes. The player classes surfaced in the king's mind. It was a young man with a powerful bow that launched an arrow. A female mage at the end of her staff who had magic power shining on her. The king grinned, so not everything was changed, but something remained the same. He smiled happily, crossing his arms over his torso. Looking at the weapons, the king thought that the fewer changes to the game, the better for him and the players. He leafed through the catalog of weapons, looking closely at the details, and choosing which weapon would suit him. Having made up his mind, the king took out a shining dagger from the blue window. He took the weapon out of the blue window. Blue lightning flashed everywhere. The system immediately notified the king that he now had the starting class of assassin. By selecting the dagger, the system moved our hero to the category of assassin and added characteristics to the character. The costume was also changed. The blue swirls of the system swirled around the king. The king looked at his body and observed the changes. Strength and dexterity were increased, were, but for some reason nothing changed in the character's characteristics. The king looked at the system panel and was puzzled, for they had not increased in any way. Pointing his finger at the characterization window, the king asked why nothing happened. Suddenly his finger went through the blue window of the system, and strange things started happening. It felt as if his finger had gone through water. 
the touch made circles like a water surface. The system alerted the king that he had touched the main memory, and a unique skill would now be unlocked. Wan Yuan touched the blue panel. That is, to change skills, one had to touch the screen. The king became the first player to touch the system. For this, the system gave him a special box as a gift, which could be unlocked when they arrived on the main island. The king also got a special skill. Memories began to flicker in his eyes. The king remembered how he had changed the settings of the game in the past body when he touched the system. His strong hands skillfully handled the settings to the game. The blue window shone brighter and brighter and notified the king that he had unlocked a unique skill. This light literally illuminated the king. The king stood there not realizing what was happening. He questioned the system. The king yelled at the system why it hid this unique skill, how he would know what the skill was, and how would he be able to use it. Wan Yuan stood there scratching the back of his head. He was pointlessly shouting at the system in an effort to find out exactly what skill he was able to obtain. But suddenly, hitting the king in the face that he dropped his dagger, some force flew out. The blow was very strong. The king might well have lost his teeth. The king's hair and clothes were scattered in different directions. The king shouted profanities and flew very far away. He flew so swiftly and quickly that he couldn't believe he was being attacked by this monster. The system didn't let him swear. It censored the profanity. But Wan Yuan was not so simple. In flight, he managed to group himself to land on his feet. He did a backflip performing the stunt perfectly. The king landed, glaring menacingly at the system, fire blazing in his eyes. His hands and feet left marks on the ground. In this way, he tried to slow down and stall. The king's dagger was pressed to the ground, ready to use it at any moment. Wan Yuan started looking straight ahead and kept questioning the pop-up. He shouted and didn't understand why the system was mocking him. Just as suddenly, he noticed an elite monster, apparently the one he would have to fight. Wang Yuan threw away his dagger. After all, he simply did not expect to see such an opponent. Wang Yuan was taken aback. The monster looked harmless. It looked like a small ball with eyes. It only had eyes and small horns sticking out. Its whole body was pink and translucent. It spoke mew, like a cat. Wan Yuan froze and looked at the little monster. Would he have to fight him? He thought it was a mistake or a joke. He had already prepared to adopt a battle stance, but now he felt foolish. How could anyone take this little monster seriously? Wan Yuan screamed. He recognized this monster as a slime monster. At the same time, this creature's stats were better than the king himself. Its strength, health, and agility levels were five times higher than the king's. However, the creature's intelligence was zero. Wan Yuan asked the system why the monster's stats were not based on its body evaluation. The system explained that there was no slime in the real world. In front of him stood a multi-story slime camp. A pink piece of slime stood next to it and was defending its domain. The system has alerted the king that he must now capture the slime camp. This is the first mission. At this, the slime itself became in a fighting stance ready to defend itself. When the slime slammed into Wan Yuan, its impact was so strong that bright sparks sprinkled from the impact with the blade. The king was thrown aside. Suddenly, this pink lump of slime suddenly attacked the king, hitting him in the stomach. The king felt a strong blow. The king crossed his arms to repel the attack. It took a large amount of strength for him to do so. Droplets of sweat ran down his face. He clenched his teeth from the effort. Because of the difference in characteristics, the king realized that it was impossible to fight in close combat. The slime attacked intensely. The blow from the enemy felt especially intense. At a glance, it was impossible to think that such a strong blow could be delivered by a small pink colobus. With all his strength, the king threw the pink slime away from him. It jumped from side to side, constantly attacking the king but he successfully dodged it as he remembered the fighting skills from his past life. Eventually, the king was able to strike the slime with his dagger. The red dagger sank into the pink monster's body. Wan Yuan's red eyes glowed with fire. He channeled all his power into the strike and expected that his dagger could destroy the monster. Wan Yuan was surprised that even with such a serious hit, the slime didn't have any damage.
the Uranos would still take away a health point even if the player couldn't tear the defense. The system issued a notification that the king had little strength and would not be able to do serious damage to the slime. The slime bounced off the king. He was very surprised, since in his previous life if such a thing happened, he would still be able to deal damage to his opponent. The king was surprised that nothing had changed. Drops of sweat were running down his face. His eyebrows were raised upward. The system reminded the king that he could move one object an unlimited number of times. After pondering for a bit longer, Wang Yuan began to guess how to win this battle. He shouted out the characteristics window. The king had a dagger in one hand, with the other he was going to change his characteristics. This had to be done as quickly as possible, as the pink slime kept attacking. He called up the characterization window as he remembered that his unique skill was being able to move items. And if he could move his characteristics, it would serve him well in defeating the enemy. A blue screen with a set of characteristics popped up in front of his eyes. Wan Yuan pondered the best way to proceed. The slime was attacking. But the king was looking at his panel. He was going to change his characteristics. For example, increase his luck to 10 points. His choice fell on the luck item. Pressing his finger, he waited for the change. His eyes quickly slid across the blue screen, choosing the right decision. He was overjoyed as his thought worked and the slider in the characteristics began to move. While he was rejoicing, a pink slime was furiously rushing towards him, ready to attack. She was going to attack from the back. King stood and studied his character's specs on the system blue window. The slime was ready to stab the king in the back as he stood next to the blue character characterization window. But then abruptly, the joyous king turned to the slime with a grin on his face. He called him his buddy and had already mentally destroyed the little pink monster. The king was sure he would win as he moved the zero symbol to his power and now he had 10 points against the slime's five points. His finger selected the right characteristics for his character. There was a terrible thump and rumble. In a heap of dust and stones lay the slime king defeated by the blow. A powerful blow was heard. The defeated king lay on the ground and did not understand why he had failed. He was surprised and annoyed. The royal strike didn't work, so he also took health damage. The system wrote that it failed to break through the pink monster's defenses. During the strike, it failed to break through the slime's defense. The king was surprised by this. All the characteristics remained the same. For some reason, the king used his skill incorrectly. All of the character's characteristics returned to their previous level. The system gave hints. You had to save the characters. The king flew in the air after being hit by the slime. He spun like a yule. The slime sat on the ground and smirked gloatingly. The king screamed and cursed as he was once again attacked by the slime, which hit him and sent him flying into the air. The system told him that at least one character should be left in the characteristic, and it was not zero. The king didn't understand why he had succeeded at first. The annoyed king landed, Abrasions and bruises were visible on him. The system kept giving hints. Stats with one character cannot be moved. It was written on the notification board. The king wondered what he could do. Since there was only one symbol left, he had only one chance. He realized what action he needed to take and what he needed to change. The system was sounding an alarm. The health level was below the safe norm. Something urgent had to be changed. The slime continued to attack while the king pondered what he should do. He made the decision to change his characteristics. He swiped one finger across the screen. Instantly, his skills changed. The slime flew towards the king, but he was ready to repel the blow. And so after making his last decision, Wan Yuan changed his characteristics. He stood, and behind his back, a monster was torn apart. A bright red punch tore the small monster apart. Pieces of pink slime flew everywhere. The king was unperturbedly cool. A mighty blow rang out, and the slime was defeated. The king was confident of his victory, rubbing his dagger on the slime. Wang Yuan grinned. After all, he had successfully changed his strength. He received a health potion for his victory. His skill level increased, and the characteristics were improved. But something was wrong, and the king soon saw what the problem was. But then suddenly, the two halves of the slime started to separate, as if nothing had happened at all. But for some reason, 
the slime's health remained the same. And now from the two halves of the monster there are two more monsters, identical to each other. The two new slimes split up, ready to attack the king at any moment. The conditions of the quest have changed again. Now the king needs to destroy two enemies, capture their camp, and head deep into the island. That is, the task was not only not completed, but on the contrary became even more difficult, and the king absolutely did not understand how to solve this problem. The king screamed at the injustice of the mission and ran with all his might from the new slime. In his world, the slime was blue in color and completely lacked the properties of pink. It took the king a while to realize what the problem was here. It all seemed wrong to him. Wan Yuan suddenly stopped and remembered how it was in his world. Sweat ran down his face. He tried to find a way to deal with these monsters as quickly as possible. He turned around and took another look at the slime, remembering what it looked like in his world. The two slimes were bouncing around like hoppers and attacking at the same time. They were no different from each other. He looked at the slime that kept attacking and thought about the fact that in his world it wasn't pink, but blue. So there were parasites involved that could divide. It was the pink color in his world that was responsible for these monsters' abilities. The king remembered that the color of the monster had a great effect on its abilities. A memory surfaced that they had discussed this with the system back then on Uranos. A parasite pavel plant that divides to germinate. That was the plant they had taken with the system to create the slime. Monsters infected with the pink color became parasites and could divide. Each time the slime would destroy, it would get bigger. And there were twice as many parasites. The king spun around in midair and landed on his feet. His red eyes glittered. He held a dagger in his hand and was about to attack the enemy. The red scarf around his neck was developing. This kind of slime was impossible to destroy. One had to look for other ways, so a special skill had to be activated. Once again, changing his characteristics, the king dodged the attack. Wan Yuan was very fast. He was rushing faster than the slimes. His eyes flashed with red flames. A bright light stretched behind him. His hair fluttered in the wind from the speed he was traveling. The king was rushing as fast as he could. Pink slime was running down his fingers. It meant that he was able to damage the monster's protective barrier. Striking the slime, the king fled from it, glaring with red eyes. The slime was visible between his fingers. The slime froze in place. Cracks ran through its body that would be about to destroy it. Between the king's fingers were two small peas that he pulled out of the slime. The system congratulated the king for recognizing the enemy's disguise, and for that, he got two parasites. The king stood in a victorious posture, for there was nothing left of the slime behind his back. He extracted the parasites and thus won the battle. He completed the quest in 29 minutes. The system alerted that he had completed the quest captured the vermin camp, and also ripped the cores out of them. One by one system notifications appeared about the king receiving bonuses for completing the mission, how long it took, how many bonus points he would receive. The king unlocked a basic skill, Stalker. A compass glowed bright blue sparks on the king's belt. The king thought about why this monster was the first challenge, since the other players couldn't know how to defeat it. It was a very tough challenge. The king could only handle it, because he knew about this vermin and how to deal with it. Wang Yuan was worried about the other players, whether they would be able to defeat the slime. He stood and looked deep into the forest. Wang Yuan was very worried about the players, and then the compass on the king's belt vibrated. He had received this compass as a reward for completing the first task. Meanwhile, in our reality, the phones were ringing nonstop in the cybersecurity agency. The place was a mess with employees running around, answering phones. Binders of reports were being carried. Personal belongings and papers were strewn everywhere. People were relentlessly answering the phone and reassuring the players that everything was going to be okay, and they were doing everything they could. That a rescue team would be on the scene soon, and that everything would be sorted out there. They reassured people that taking off the glasses would not cause the death of the real body, and that it was all rumors. Lots of men in business suits and virtual glasses reassured people that everything was fine. A man with long gray hair stood there, sad that the day had just begun, and the office was such a mess. 
Phone calls and shouting from employees could be heard everywhere. The man was on the phone asking if the staff had found any leads in the case. He held a cigarette in his long fingers, ash falling from it onto the floor. His nameplate said, head of the investigation department. He thought about the fact that such a big game was hard to crack. And it's definitely not clean. A cigarette smoked between his fingers. The man took a drag on his cigarette and wondered, who could have ruined this game so badly? The man had a mustache and a beard. He was wearing a good quality business suit. He spoke on the phone, saying that he had an inkling of what had happened. There were puffs of smoke coming out of his mouth. He thought that perhaps the cause was the continent of Uranos. It was the most possible of all causes. The man's name was Chief Lu. He was talking on the phone, but he was called out. He crumpled his cigarette in his hand. He had a gray beard on his face. He was a tall and slender man of age. He wore special virtual reality goggles over his eyes. The deputy department head called over a gray-haired man who was his boss. The employee reported that something had just happened. The deputy held a folder in his hands. He was a young man with short hair. He greeted the chief and smilingly told him the pleasant news. The deputy reported that they were able to get into the game. With the help of special technology, a man was sitting in a chair with many wires coming from it. The man was wearing a special suit, and on his head was a virtual reality helmet. The supervisor was shocked and angry. He said they were all crazy for taking such a risky venture. He glared angrily at the employee. How did they decide to do such a risky thing without asking him? The research compass was a very useful thing. It could be used in this storyline. On it, you could see enemies, allies, items, achievements of the main island. All of these things could be seen with the research compass. It helped to track the objectives of the game. The king was just using the compass and looking for the right object. He swiveled his head around looking for what the compass was pointing to. Behind the king was the captured slime camp. Holding the compass in his hand, he looked up in search of an object. Or rather, it was a man. A man to be found. But then there was such a scream that even the birds were frightened and flew out of the trees. Or rather, there was a crash, for a man had fallen from the tree right under the king's feet. The king watched as some person in front of him fell down from a tree. Wan Yuan put his foot on the tree. He was holding a dagger in one hand and had a research compass clutched in the other. He was surprised as the person rumbled down from the tree with a loud noise. In front of the king was a young man in a cloak. He was kneeling and coughing. The cloak was on his body, and on his face was a hood so the king could not immediately see his face. Then the king asked the man who he was. But the young man was frightened and crawled even farther away. He landed painfully on his fifth point. But the pain was no less than the fear of the stranger. The man with gray eyes and hair stared at the king in horror. The young man was nervous and trying to think of what to say to the king. He looked away. The mage was chewing on grass leaves and pretending to be very tasty. When the system sent notifications to the king that he had found his first traveling companion, the compass data will be updated. And then the young man said that he had climbed up the tree to eat the delicious fruit. But it was clear he was lying. The system issued a new notification. To provide the best experience for the players, the game provided a different beach for everyone. However, Soon the airship will pick up the players. The faster you find the players, the better it will be. And then the system gave out that the king had met a traveling companion and they had to complete a new task together. He had to find three more people to leave the island together. This task was made available thanks to the research compass. Players can trust their traveling companions. The king was so pleased with the player that he shouted for joy, but his traveling companion was only more frightened. He was afraid that the king would hit him because the king looked like a strong player. The mage tried to move away from the king and take cover, as he feared a sudden attack. The king was already mentally scolding himself for scaring the player so badly. In his mind, he scolded himself for his haste. And in order to smooth the impression, he also tried to eat the fruit of the tree, pretending that he tasted good, which caused a lot of questions from the new player. The player smiled at the king, but mentally he was terrified because the grass was inedible. 
He pretended to eat it so that he wouldn't get beaten up or something bad done to him. The king chewed the grass, thinking that the players liked it. His companion did not understand the reason for the king's behavior, for he himself was eating the leaves, only because he was afraid. Is the king mocking him? Or is he really that stupid, not a strong character? The player thought about the reasons for the king's behavior. He thought that the king probably only knows how to fight. That's why he behaves so strangely. After all, the magician had already seen several players who behaved differently in the game. The player secretly watched the other players fighting, taking note of the details. The red-haired young man with the sword didn't notice the obstacle. He swung his sword, but his actions produced poor results. But could he be the one to handle the slime and be able to take over their camp? He was looking for someone to take over the monster camp, but he saw the players losing. The mage watched as the weaker players didn't even try to fight the slime, getting hit by it and running away, hoping to escape. That's what the young white-haired player did, and the system alerts as the horses are out of the game, which really scared the man. For under him, the player who failed turned into a gravestone. The system wrote that Lindsay's journey ended here, in the game. The player remembered these moments and trembled with horror. He was afraid of such an outcome. It was not only scary, but also dangerous for life to be in the place of a losing player. After all, no one knew what the game would do to the real body in real life. What if you don't come back? So the player decided to ask the king for help and offer him friendship. He called the king bro and with uncertainty in his voice asked him for help. He asked the king if he had enough strength to go along. The king looked silly at this moment. He was chewing a leaf from a tree because he thought that was the kind of thing the players liked. Right now, no one would be able to say that not long ago, the person who chewed the leaves defeated the monsters. The player told how he saw the king fighting the slime and was impressed by this battle. The mage was passing by and couldn't help but be amazed by the king's abilities. Especially, he had not yet seen in the game those who had managed this task. No one had ever captured the slime camp. The player showed a performance as the king fought the monster. Wan Yuan fought the slime at the speed of light, and the pink monsters had no choice but to lose this battle. The player showed a masterful performance, so the king was amazed by his abilities. The man fell on his knees in front of the embarrassed king and called him God. The rays of the sun illuminated the embarrassed king, although he had to be used to people kneeling before him. After all, in the past, he was the king of an entire continent and was worshipped. After all this, the king said that it was a simple mission for beginners and that the players should be able to handle it. But the mage didn't think so. He had seen stronger players fail the mission and even die during it, especially since he himself had not been able to complete the mission yet. The man was embarrassed and had no answer. He pondered for a moment and then he told the king. He took a long time to choose his words, to ask for help in completing the mission with the pink slime. The player said that he had a problem, that on this whole island, only the king would be able to help him. He needed to complete the first mission. The gray-haired man grabbed the department head by the shirt. He said that the technical department hadn't submitted the data yet, so why did the department head send the employees to certain death? The supervisor didn't understand the problem because the people were experienced employees. The department head said he had sent 12 groups of the most experienced people but only one had gotten through Uranus's defenses. He was smiling and regretting what had happened. The disgruntled boss still towered over him, but that didn't bother the man much. The chief was angry and repeated that only one employee had gotten into the game. That was reassuring, because if someone else had gotten hurt, he would have been personally responsible. There was a chance that it really wasn't that dangerous. At least that was the hope. The department head patted the chief on the shoulder and told him not to worry. The older man stood and digested the information. The security officer had found a loophole and entered the game, which meant that somehow he would be able to send them intelligence. The chief was surprised to hear that the employee that was able to break into the game was his most talented student. His bright eyes rounded with surprise. He was scared for his student. A man named Jin Yao An got into the game. He was lying in a special camera and virtual reality goggles. This was the boss's best teachings. There were high hopes for him, but the boss really wanted him to stay safe and not get hurt in the game. 
The sun was shining and birds were flying in the sky. The king was talking to his new companion. The king talked to his new companion about how he had gotten to the island and had not yet been able to complete the first task. The travel companion told me that for some reason he got to the island and didn't complete the first task. He thought it was a bug in the system. He started his story about how he had to escape from the pink monsters, and he had no choice but to run and hide to save his life. A companion told me that when he fought the monster, his attacks were ineffective. So he was thrown into a tree where he grabbed a fruit, and then the system gave a clue to the unlucky player. It seems that it was this fruit that could save his life from the pink monsters. The system alerted him that if he threw this fruit, it would explode. And then the man started furiously throwing these fruits at the slime. There were explosions and smoke everywhere, so the magician could not see what was happening to his enemy. But he hoped that his tactics would work and he could win. At some point, he stopped and noticed that it was not helping, but making things worse. After all, the slugs were not decreasing, but somehow increasing in number. For a moment, he stopped throwing fruit. When the smoke cleared, there were already many slime monsters looking at him, and they were all ready to attack. Their eyes glistened, and their small bodies looked brand new and never damaged. The mage didn't know exactly how many slimes were chasing him. The player was very dumbfounded by this. He threw away the rest of the fruit and almost cried. He had only one hope for salvation, and that was to run as far away from the pink monsters as possible. So he climbed down from the tree and in a terrible hurry began to run away from the many pink monsters, which he created himself, because he threw fruit bombs at them. He was crying, snot and drool running down his face, screaming in fear that the system was mocking him. The king listened to the story and noted that he was very impressed with the way the player behaved. The mage scratched the back of his head in embarrassment. The king glared wryly at the player. Zhiji Yuan confessed to the king that he didn't know that slugs had such a feature that they could share. The king opened the system notification and said that in order to help the player with the task, they needed to first create a group to share the mage's task. The player rejoiced. The mage called the king bro and was glad that bro would help him with this pink slime challenge. The system wrote that player Wang Yuan was ready to create a group. The man gladly accepted the request, hoping that the trial could now be completed without much trouble. The man turned out to be a magician, and his name was Shi Ji Yuan. He decided to stick together with Wan Yuan. He asked the king to accompany him, although it was noticeable that the same mage's health level was much higher. But Zhi Ji Yuan was determined to gain this player's trust. The mage looked at Wang Yuan's characterization and was amazed that he only had one health point. The king didn't understand what had surprised the mage so much. He froze in shock looking at the king's characterization. The mage was so amazed that he shouted very loudly. All the birds scattered. After all, the king had only one health point in his characteristics, which clearly did not indicate that the mage was the strongest player in front of him, and he was so hopeful of defeating the slime. Xie Ji Yuan was upset when he saw the king's health, although the latter explained that it was a side effect of his special skill. If the king wants to become stronger, Wan Yuan turned to the mage and promised to help him with the mission. The king said that the chance of error had decreased and seemed to know how to help the mage deal with the slime. Although Shi Ji Yuan was very worried that he seemed to have chosen the wrong player, he was crying with resentment in his heart. The king was confident. He looked cool, standing in the sunlight. The sun illuminated his friendly face. His red eyes looked at the mage with kindness. Wan Yuan asked Shi Ji Yuan if he was willing to trust him. He extended his hand to his companion and waited for his answer. The mage was nervous, but he agreed to the king's terms and trusted him. He chuckled nervously and clarified with the king what their plan of action was and what the mage himself had to do to accomplish it. Then, Wan Yuan suspended the mage as bait and waited for the slime to attack. The mage swayed on the tree, unable to do anything. He was shocked and vulnerable, gingerly looking back and forth at the camp and the king. The slime camp loomed in front of them. A multitude of pink monsters walked around and defended the camp. The king showed the mage a raised finger upwards. He himself stayed in the ambush. He promised that everything would be fine. 
Such was his plan of action once the mission was over. Xie Ji Yuan was scared and upset. He was thinking about Wan Yuan testing him. The mage was hanging on the tree like a statue. He was scared and hot. He didn't know what to expect from his new companion, and he wasn't entirely sure if the king could truly handle the task at hand. The mage called the king bro and asked how he was going to deal with the huge army of slugs. The mage was worried that the king was taking big risks fighting so many opponents. At this time, the king was watching the slugs, thinking up a plan in his head. The king tossed the stone in the air and asked his buddy not to worry, as he had everything under control. Wan Yuan said that he would help the magician start his test. He just had to wait a little longer. He promised that nothing terrible would happen and the mage would not get hurt. Pink slugs were walking on the beach. They were scattered in different places, and they did not look at the king and his companion at all. Then the king threw a stone at the army of pink slugs, which made them all startle. They shuddered and searched for the source of the disturbance. The little pink monsters became angry and turned towards the king. Their eyes shone with anger. The little bodies were ready to attack whoever decided to encroach on their camp. At that very moment, the king hid in the green bushes, only the edge of his clothes sticking out. So the monsters had no choice but to attack the one they saw in the tree. And that was a tied-up, frightened mage, waiting for the king's help. Who served as bait? The magician was very much frightened, a look of terror on his face. He was waiting for his end. Droplets of sweat ran down his face. He froze in amazement. When the pink slugs began to pounce on him, he screamed and waved his staff furiously. He was crying, snot dripping from his nose, and the mage was mentally saying goodbye to his life. He was thinking about how he would fight off these blows. He shouted for the pink monsters to stay away from him. At that very moment, the slime was attacked by some black, swift shadow. The mage didn't even have time to see anything. He only saw the shadow hitting the pink monsters, and the slime was broken into small pieces by the shadow's blows. So the mage never needed to fight them. The mage was shocked by such a swift and rapid attack. He didn't expect the king to be so strong. He watched with interest as the battle continued. The mage was covered in sweat from the ordeal. His gray eyes watched the king with surprise. His mouth was open in surprise. His eyebrows were raised. The king stood with weapon in hand. The slime had been destroyed. He looked cool. The system triggered an alert. The king had a stealth skill, which gave him a lot of advantages. For every enemy destroyed, his movement speed increased by 10%. Wan Yuan embarrassedly asked the suspended mage how he felt about his new skill. And in general, the king expected praise from his traveling companion for his successful mission. The mage looked down at the king and waited for him to bring him down as hanging from the tree was very uncomfortable. The system notified them that the mage's task was complete. The weapon returned to the inventory. The king smiled happily. He looked at the mage hanging from the tree. At this very moment, a young black-haired girl was watching them. Her eyes were as black as night. She was wearing white gloves on her hands. She was hiding behind a tree trunk, thinking about something. The girl with black eyes watched the king and thought that he was not so easy to defeat. Her gaze was filled with anger and interest. She tried to hide before the king and the mage could see her. The mage checked his notifications and realized that the system hadn't counted the slime as a victory for him. The king looked at his hand where the parasites were. Jie Ji Yuan was very upset. He had already done a lot to achieve victory in this trial. The panel said that zero out of ten parasites had been collected. The king moved the vermin into the mage's hand hoping the system would give him credit for defeating the pink monsters. The mage opened his palms and put up two hands at once. His task was to collect ten parasites and to see their disguises. The system didn't count the parasite transfer because Xi Ji Yuan's player inventory was full. The parasite nuclei simply jumped out of the mage's hands. Wan Yuan and Xi Ji Yuan were surprised by this. Xi Ji Yuan chuckled embarrassedly and started to check his inventory. According to him, there was nothing special in there. He looked at his panel, looking at what was in his inventory. He showed the king that his inventory contained many exploding fruits that he had collected while fighting the slime. They filled almost all of the mage's storage. 
There were nine fruits in each slot, and at the bottom was a description of the properties of those fruits. The king was unhappily silent and awaited a reply from his interlocutor. Wan Yuan asked how much fruit the mage had taken. He replied that since he couldn't fight, he had taken the fruit to save his life, and he would have taken more if the system allowed it. The mage said this with embarrassment, while the king grinned at us. Checking the amount of fruit, the magician decided to give the king some exploding fruit. Just the space, freed up, could be used for parasite eggs. The system notification prompted the king to accept the gift from player Xi Ji Yuan. Xi Ji Yuan offered the king 18 fruits. Just in the space that was vacated, the parasite nuclei could be placed. The mage was going to give these fruits as a thank you for his help. But he was worried that it wouldn't be enough for the king. Xi Ji Yuan was very worried that the king wouldn't accept his gift or think it wasn't good enough. He was counting in his head that sooner or later he would be able to seize the opportunity and find out what the king really wanted and what he could use to get him on his side. While the magician was considering what else to bribe the king with, the king looked at the fruit with admiration. Stars were burning in his eyes. Wan Yuan looked at the two red and shiny fruits with admiration. This picture shocked the mage, for he had expected a different reaction from a strong warrior. Before the fruit fell into Wan Yuan's hands, the system alerted him that he had unlocked the recognition skill. At this moment, the magician was carefully watching the king and was afraid that he wouldn't need the fruit. The king looked with his red eyes at the notices. It said that the higher the value and quantity of the gift, the higher the recognition scale. Right now, the scale was 21.6% full. He was given a bonus for the first gift from a player. The system also notified that once the recognition scale was filled to 1,000, a new skill level would begin to unlock. The king grinned when he heard this news. Especially, this scale was replenished by any gifts given to the king from other players. The king was very happy. He always knew that he could please the players. Stars sparkled around him. He waved his tail like a satisfied cat. The mage thought to himself that the king had helped him solve a huge problem. But at the same time, Wan Yuan was also happy about a small gift like fruit. The mage didn't understand why the king was happy that other people were taking advantage of his kindness. He thought about Wan Yuan being taken advantage of, and he was grateful because he believed that other players were helping him. The mage twirled his hair and didn't know how to hint this to the king. The king suddenly interrupted the mage's thoughts. He called out to him, touching him on the shoulder, and offered the parasite cores. The system alerted that player Xi Ji Yuan had completed the main quest, received the research compass, and could start a joint companion quest with Wan Yuan. At last, they were able to open a joint quest to find traveling companions. The king called the wizard with him to search for the rest of their company. In the light of the beams, the king looked very cool. His dark hair glistened, his black armor gleamed, and his red eyes radiated warmth. Xie Ji Yuan was surprised that the king wanted to take him with him on a search for people. He looked at the king with distrust and was afraid that he would change his mind. His gray eyes studied the king carefully. Xi Ji Yuan put on his hood and headed after the king. In his heart, he thought he was a complete fool who was going to help other people for nothing. Although those people might as well use the king for their own purposes. The mage happily agreed to go with the king. He said he had to go in a different direction, for the traveling companions were there. He had seen some of them. He also informed the king that none of them were able to complete their task. And the king's help here would come in handy. Xie Ji Yuan said that he had seen several players before meeting the king and led him to the place where he had met them. They passed by the skeleton of some ancient monster. The head of this monster had horns. The size of this monster was as big as modern multi-story houses. They reached the beach where they saw a rock, a player who had gone to the other side of the world. The system alerted the king that he had lost one of his traveling companions. This made the king very sad. The mage also sat next to him and was sad. He placed a white flower on the gravestone. At the second beach, they met a boy named Hua Huan. He became their second traveling companion. The boy was scared and crying. 
it seemed that he was not only afraid of monsters, but also of the king himself. Wan Yuan handed the boy a handful of pink vermin nuclei and explained that this was needed to complete the level. On the third beach, they were faced with a mountain of slugs. This mountain exceeded the height of all the players. They were shocked by such a large number of monsters. The players stood still and looked around the mountain in search of the lost companion they were hoping to find. The king ran into a huge mountain of slugs. He looked for the man and hoped he was all right. He raked the monster's bodies with his hands, and through a small gap, he saw a very tired man standing in front of him. He was breathing hard from fatigue, but he kept fighting. The king turned on his skill and raked a huge mountain of slime. There, he saw a panting young man. The red-haired youth was desperately swinging his sword, endlessly separating the slimes. He was shouting very loudly that he wasn't afraid of the slimes and was willing to fight them for as long as it took. The red-haired young man was out of breath. He was already all red from the constant physical effort. He was hitting the slime, and he didn't stop for a moment. Suddenly, the young man noticed among the mountain of pink slugs a king who was rushing to his aid. The slugs were beating against Wang Yuan's body, hitting him in the face several times. But the king was glad that the player was still fine. He sent him an invitation to join their team. The young man stared questioningly and didn't understand what was going on or who Wan Yuan was. The young man looked at the king questioningly, not understanding how he had come to be here at all or what he wanted from him. He held his sword and breathed heavily as he fought off the attacks of the pink slime without stopping, a mountain of which was on all sides next to the new player. They looked at each other. There was a mountain of slime in the background. Warrior Lua Zheng had a good level of health and strength, while Wan Yuan couldn't boast the same, but still the slime couldn't break through his defense. So he was unharmed, and glad that he had reached the third traveling companion. Wan Yuan saw that the slugs couldn't break through this player's defense. His eyes sparkling, he smiled at the new player. The king promised that he would take on the rest of the slugs, and immediately began to fulfill his promise. Wang Yuan unlocked his skill and began to destroy the pink monsters. He hit them with such force that they bounced off his dagger like balls. And the blow was so strong that it left a black trail behind it. He destroyed many monsters, moved fast, increased his agility, but lost his strength. His stats were constantly changing, his dexterity increasing by a few units, but his strength decreasing. This was his special skill. His red eyes glittered. His hands with the dagger moved quickly and clearly. The system wrote that he was performing one combo after another, the monsters melting before his eyes. The last total was a combo X-1024. Wan Yuan moved like a tornado, destroying the monsters. Pieces of monsters flew. Black and red flashes of power flashed. He created a huge black vortex so fast was he moving. A dumbfounded swordsman looked up at this vortex from below. Lu Ah Zheng watched the king with astonishment. He opened his mouth in shock. Pieces from the pink monsters flew everywhere and fell on the red-haired swordsman. Finally, the king was finished. He jumped to the player and praised him for being able to create a thousand pink monsters. Lu Ah Zheng replied that he couldn't stand by while being attacked. He received a notification that he had completed the quest and joined the group. Finally, there were three traveling companions standing with the king. The players were about to go to another beach in search of traveling companions, for one was still lost as well. The mage waved a leaf at the king and offered him a rest. The boy offered the king some juicy fruit in gratitude. Suddenly, an alert appeared. It said that the time of the test had come to an end. The scores would be tallied. Those with the lowest scores would have to leave the island. The magician was startled. The boy was also dumbfounded and hid behind the magician's back. The blue-eyed boy Hua Huan received 15 points for the mission. He was very glad that he had gotten through this mission at all. He tentatively held his weapon in his hands. He was embarrassed by his score. The red-haired warrior Lu Ah Zheng also received 15 points, which he was not happy about since there were more enemies. The system replied that swinging his sword was useless and didn't produce any results. Although he had created as many as a hundred slugs, Magician Shi Ji Yuan also got 15 points. They were discussing this victory with the king.
Just then, the system added another three points to him. The king and the mage decided that he got this for serving as a decoy. The mage's total number of points became 18. Wang Yuan received 15 points, and then the battle counter began to spin frantically, awarding him new points. His cool silhouette was calm and focused. He was holding a dagger in his hands, his hair fluttering in the wind. Remnants of slime flew around. Wan Yuan stood in a cool pose, red lines streaking behind his back. These lines were the king himself as he lightningly destroyed the pink monsters. The battle score counter was constantly changing, increasing in a big way. The system triggered memories of past battles, where the king was very fast. He was rushing, and his red eyes were fiercely looking at the pink monsters. In the end, the system calculated the total number of points of Wang Yuan's player. For all the battles came out to be 1,035 points. The king's red eyes looked at the blue screen where the final score was displayed. The total number of player Wang Yuan's final points in the first stage was 1,050 points. The system notified all the players that the king had taken the lead among the players. He had not expected this of himself. He was amazed in a pleasant way. Wan Yuan grinned. He was very proud of his result and was expecting praise. He was proud of his result and tried to hide from the players that he wasn't as happy about it as he actually was. To them, he said that the system didn't have to notify everyone so pathetically. His traveling companion stood beside him. The magician was congratulating him. So happy, in fact, that he stuck out his tongue in a shout. The boy looked on in admiration. The warrior was jealous of the king, so he said he was just lucky. The system announced that 15 points were needed to advance to the next stage. That's how many they all had. The magician was very happy for the king, jumping around him, pointing his fingers up, and in general, praised him relentlessly. The king was pleased himself. That's why he rubbed the boy's hair with pleasure. The warrior smiled at them and thought they were quite close. All the players cheered. The magician was giving the king a thumbs up. The king was embarrassed and overjoyed. Suddenly, a message appeared on their blue system notifications saying that those who did not get the right number of points would be removed from the island. The rest had to choose whether to leave or stay. Everyone looked carefully at their notifications. On the blue screen, it was written that the beach area would be closed in two minutes, and the players had to decide where they wanted to go. It was necessary to make a quick decision where the travelers would go. All the players were nervous. They were frantically searching for the forest, as in two minutes the way there would be closed. But the red-haired player was in a different mood. He was thinking about something while standing by a tree. The child was turning his head, looking for a path they should all take to get into the forest. The red-haired warrior Lu Ajeng tapped himself on his armor and told everyone that they could now withdraw. The warrior rejoiced at this message. Hooray, it seems the players could now leave the game. It was very timely as Lu Ajeng already had plans for this evening. He confidently packed his things and had already turned around towards the beach. A smile shone on his face. All the players were looking at Lu Ajeng like a fool because he was about to walk towards the beach. When he noticed their questioning looks, the warrior tried to explain to them that he was about to leave the game. He didn't understand what was wrong, why they were hesitating. The mage gritted his teeth and tensed. He didn't think it was that simple. For some reason, he remembered anime with similar plots, and in general, everything that happened in the game was unexplainable. Xi Ji Yuan had once watched a similar anime. He didn't think that the participants would be able to get out so easily. The more strange things happen in the game, such as the fact that all the contestants became similar to themselves from the real world, which could not help but frighten him. The mage thought to himself that Lu Ajeng really wants to get out of the game, and perhaps he should be pushed into this decision. Maybe it could be that simple. Especially since the warrior himself is asking to do it. After all, it's just a game anyway, and there can be mistakes. Lu Ajeng was convinced by the mage's words. There was a real chance that it was all a bug in the game, and he would be able to go out into the real world safely. In any case, it was possible to give it a try. Magician Shi Ji Yuan urged the warrior to stay and promised to meet him next time and play together. Lu Ajeng stood and listened to the explanation. 
the magician told the warrior to try and see if it really works. The magician didn't wait long and pushed the warrior towards the beach. Lu Ajeng began to hesitantly agree, pressured by the magician. He said he would give it a try. He was being pushed towards the beach. Lu Ajeng uncertainly scratched his head but still decided to go. Lu Ajeng went to the beach and waved to his former traveling companions. He told them that he really liked them and it was a pleasure to play with them. The magician was happy to say goodbye to him. But here, the king and the boy were not happy. They doubted the success of this venture. And they were silent. The king was nervous. He didn't want to force the player to stay in the game, but he was worried that this method wouldn't work. Could the way out of the game look like this? And wouldn't it be a one-way path? While the players were thinking about the possible problems or successes of this mission, a terrible glowing funnel opened up in the sky above them with lightning bolts coming out of it. All the players shuddered and looked up. There were loud noises, and a monster appeared from this funnel. A huge dragon appeared in front of swordsman Lu Ah Zheng. It was so big that an ordinary person could easily fit into its shining eye. So large and majestic was the monster. Its eyes shone with blue fire and were brighter than the sun. A monster of unimaginable size flew towards the beach. The system showed that this monster's name was Island Scavenger. The notification to the players said that the beach area would be closed. All locations would be removed, as well as anyone who chose to stay on the beach. The shadow of the monster covered the red-haired warrior. Lu Ah Jung froze in amazement. He saw the characteristics of the Island Scavenger. Its strength exceeded 9999999, and all the other characteristics were hidden. But no one doubted that they clearly exceeded the characteristics of all the characters combined. The system alerted the players. Five seconds left to think. The mage was terrified. The system said the scavenger would destroy everything in its path. He screamed, sweat pouring down his face and snot dripping from his nose. The system alerted the players faster and faster. When there were four seconds left to make a decision, the little player trembled and tried to run as far away as possible. Lu Ah Jang drew his sword, intending to defend himself. His hands were trembling the same way his sword was trembling. He looked towards the trash monster and tried to convince himself that this was a way to unlog himself. He repeated it to himself like a mantra. The system alerted him that there were three seconds left to go. The king clenched his hand into a fist. He shouted that there was definitely something wrong here. The system wouldn't send a bloodthirsty monster just to get him out of the game. This was all more like a punishment and a loss for the player. The king activated his skill and threw Lu Ah Jeng his scarf to get him out of the scavenger's clutches. He activated his secret skill, increasing his strength to nine, but at the same time, the strength was reduced by dexterity. The king shouted Lu Ah Jeng's name loudly and asked him to grab on. Lu Ah Jeng looked down at his body. He saw the king's red ribbon wrapped around his body. It was painful as the ribbon struck with force. The swordsman couldn't see what the others were doing, and certainly didn't notice the king rushing to his aid. When there were zero seconds left, the swordsman turned around in surprise and looked towards his comrades. There was fear in his eyes. A drop of sweat was running down his face. It was obvious that he was not sure of his decision. And then there was a huge explosion. The players were thrown back by the blast wave so that they could not see each other. The system notified the participants that the first stage had been successful. It invited all the participants to continue the journey. There were just under 70 hours left. The mage and the boy were left alone. They looked in the direction where the beach used to be. They were terrified of what had happened and had barely survived such a fall. There was still dust everywhere from the explosion that had happened. They didn't speak to each other, just stared at the abyss. Xi Ji Yuan was very nervous and blamed himself for persuading the warrior to stay on the island. He didn't mean him any harm. He just wanted to test the capabilities of the system. The mage lost sight of the king. He wondered if Wan Yuan couldn't throw the dagger and thus save himself and get out of the jaws of the beast. The mage and the boy stood on the edge of the cliff where they had seen the king and the warrior only five seconds before. Just a few meters away from them, a whole piece of the island was gone and not so long ago there had been a whole beach. The worst part was that they couldn't see the king and the warrior beside them. 
Shi Jiyuan was standing on the edge of the cliff and was about to cry, when suddenly, something behind his back startled him. When he turned around, he saw a king landing who was holding a frightened warrior in his arms. They landed with such force that the ground beneath their feet trembled. The mage was happy to see the king alive again, for without his help, they would not have been able to pass the test. The king smiled at him and said that they shouldn't have been so worried because the king had everything under control and they were fine. But at the same time, the king was looking at Lu Ah Jung, who was writhing in pain because he had injured his ribs when he had saved him from the monster. The king was embarrassed by the situation. He nervously apologized and scratched the back of his head. A drop of sweat was running down his face. He apologized for hurting and harming the player, but in his defense, the king said that the situation required emergency measures. The king ran after Lu Ah Jeng, ready to jump after him into the jaws of the trash monster at any moment. The swordsman was terrified. He didn't understand what was happening or how he could escape. The king threw his red scarf that encircled the young man's body and yanked him towards him. When the king grabbed the player, his damage level was increased by two times, but his health was in the minus position. The system notified that the king was in a peaceful location, and if he harmed another player a third time, he would be punished by the judge. Worried about the player's condition and health, the king offered a health potion to the red-haired young man. The potion was a small corked vial with a blue liquid splashing around in it. Lu Ah Jeng was still angry and dissatisfied, so he didn't even look at the king. The king stood and held a blue vessel with a restorative potion in his hands. Lu Ah Jeng asked them if they thought he was a toy to test the game's capabilities. He didn't mind practicing with the players, and Lu Ah Jeng was also grateful to them for helping and saving him. Lu Ah Jeng was very dissatisfied and confused. He was still sitting on the ground. The red-haired man held his head and said that he was grateful to them, but he had an important meeting scheduled for tonight that he couldn't miss. So why were they not letting him off the hook? Pet the cat. Uh, 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 uh,